it's been a crazy week of all these headlines out of Reuters, mm -hmm. uh, the Chris Hughes uh, treatise and his appearances yeah. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Is there a consensus on what happens now? Well, I think there's going to be a new consent order, and I think the elements of it will be a fine, a pretty hefty one. It'll have to be some sort of behavioral restrictions, uh, probably moving privacy further up in the food chain in the, um, in the officers who are in charge of that at the company, because the company's now a lot bigger. Don't forget the original privacy consent was 2011, and about activities that took place starting in 2008. Now the company has 30,000 people. It's a very different place. Now the real question is that I've been hearing about is whether in an internal dispute at the commission whether Mark Zuckerberg is named personally or personally, not. Yeah, this was what the Times highlighted a couple of weekends ago. Right. And it, it is interesting. That's a very rare kind of action for the FTC. And it's usually most appropriate if someone is personally involved with a decision that violates the law. I'm not sure they can get that here, and I'm not sure it would be particularly effective. We've actually had lawmakers in the last week, week and a half, on our air who have made that argument that mm -hmm. Zuckerberg should be held personally accountable if you see mm -hmm. a breach like this moving forward in the future. Mm -hmm. If not the FTC, could you see something like that become part of legislation around tech regulation in the future? That's kind of hard. You know, it's very interesting. The naming and shaming power of the FTC, when you're naming someone personally liable, is, um, is, a, is one of the tools. But on the other hand, is that the most effective way of getting at the problem at Facebook? I would think that the behavioral remedies that they're talking about, about having someone in the C-suite who can decide on privacy, that's probably a lot more powerful. You're an advisor to Facebook during the time when they got into this mess, or at least this mess uh, was discovered and came up. What's your take on how they are handling it now? and the extent to which they are bringing down legal, if not regulatory, uh, doom on their heads? Well, I think that they... There's one thing that's happened here with Cambridge Analytica. It was how... Trying to spotlight on how Facebook is handling third-party use of information. Since the time of... Uh, that was 2011. They've closed a lot of those doors. But it also highlights the fact that they have to be a lot more careful in monitoring who they share information with. If they're not in control, who's in control and for what purpose? That's the real challenge here. And it's a challenge not just for Facebook, it's for everybody else in the information chain. That's whether Google uses your information or Amazon or Apple or anyone else. That's what's most appropriate for a legislative fix, not necessarily a corporate fix, because I don't think you will would really solve the problem. I'm not hearing you say that a breakup would do anything. Well, one of the problems with the breakup here, I've, t I've heard a lot of people talk about this. It sounds like a political answer to me in the sense that uh, I've been around to see what happened with Microsoft and what happened with AT&T, and this is not an essential service. This is not, this is not like the phone company putting a phone <laughs> so, in your house. Some might disagree, but well, okay. Maybe, it, maybe if I'm 14, it might be an essential service. But I, I think it's important to say that there are other competitors out there. There's a lot of competitors out there. And so uh, in order to get to a breakup stage, which is, when you look at the antitrust laws, which is the very most radical end, you have to get to a lot of stuff before then. Now, let's also remember what the FTC has before it right now is a consent order that's based on its consumer protection jurisdiction. It's not a complaint that's based on antitrust. That's a key point. We've got, we've got Facebook restricting live features and cracking down on some of the types of videos or you know, misinformation, violent uh, content that could be used on that feature. On the flip side, there's been this brewing debate that seems to be getting bigger around cracking down on mis misinformation, cracking down on harmful content versus censorship. Mm -hmm. How do you think about that? And how does a company like Facebook actually address that in such a way that's fair? Well, this is a very difficult thing to do because I think a lot of what I hear in terms of breakup and other things is really about content regulation. Yeah. And we, it's also a problem here because we have a First Amendment in the United States which you don't have in other countries. So. On one hand, Facebook is caught in the middle. On one hand, people want them to censor more. On the other hand, people want them to censor less. So is there, and we have no regime in the United States that allows censorship at all. 
So they're really in new territory here. And to say what the balance is, what the middle of the bell curve is going to be, right. it's hard to say. But that, I would say, submit, has to be more than just Facebook. It has to be yeah. a discussion with a much broader group of people.